What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. This is a video I almost forgot to make actually. This footage has been sitting on my hard drive and so, well, I guess I got around to it. This is going to be a tour of the Fairchild Botanical Garden in Miami, Florida. I'm not really sure how much narration I'm really going to have throughout this whole video because there are some scenes that are just beautiful and just worth just watching and not having me talk over it, but I'll try and, uh, I guess, do a little bit of something. If you ever do find yourself in Miami, Florida, this is a place you must visit. It was actually absolutely insane. I've never seen such a collection of plants in my entire life like this. I mean, I haven't seen that many collections either, but I'm pretty sure this is like the cream of the crop of like all botanical gardens, especially because it's growing so far south in Florida that everything can be super tropical. Um, just a real quick hack, I, I, w I guess I wouldn't call this a hack, but um, it is $25 a person to go to this place. However, if you don't know this already, most botanical gardens have like a reciprocity um, agreement with other botanical gardens. So it's probably best for you to buy a membership at your local botanical garden because that'll probably run you about 50 bucks. I, I don't know what the prices are that range, but mine was 50 bucks for a membership. And that's the cost of two people to enter this botanical garden. So you can get yourself a membership at your own botanical garden, use that membership at other botanical gardens and basically get in free everywhere. So, um, I mean, I guess it's kind of, it sucks because you're not really uh, paying to get into Fairchild, but you did help a botanical garden somewhere. So that's my ultimate recommendation. If you'd go to this place, look up your local one. You might as well get a membership. It supports your local one and it allows you free membership into everywhere. Um, that's the end of my little shilling thing. Let's just uh, get back to walking through this place. Sadly though, when we did arrive, um, there was only about an hour and a half until close. The drive took a lot longer than I expected coming all the way from Wisconsin. Well, I mean, the trip was cut in half, but still, I, I misjudged the timing. But either way, you're pretty much assaulted with rare plants, awesome philodendron, alocasia, palm trees, cycads, ferns, like epiphytes, like everything you can possibly imagine. And then there's this really awesome pond pretty early on in the walk. Um, we will get to the cloud forest a little later, so definitely stay tuned or skip to that because that was absolutely incredible. But either way, this place is just jam-packed with super awesome stuff. I was super surprised to see that they actually had quite a big like succulent collection with a lot of cactuses, um, euphorbia, I don't even know if I'm saying it right, just a lot of different species of stuff you would find in more arid places, which is funny because this is like Florida and very tropical. But they really got the whole like tropical thing on a lot of this. You'll see like orchids sticking to some of the sides of some of these more like desert looking plants. Um, something I really love about this place and Miami in general is there's stuff growing just everywhere. It was just awesome. The drive just to get to this place was insane. Like the neighborhood, I mean, it's a really wealthy neighborhood. The houses are millions of dollars. But still, just I was screaming the whole way there, driving my wife nuts just because like Every tree has like epiphytes growing in it. There's like monstera just growing in people's yards. Philodendron that we consider pretty rare are just like out and about. It was insane. I personally really love when like trees are full of air plants and other epiphytes. I love them. I love ferns that grow in trees. I just love that really like messy aesthetic. I love when like you have plants supporting other plants. Um, I forget what that relationship is. It's not parasitic, but symbiotic or whatever it just was awesome miami blew my mind as just some uh country bumpkin from wisconsin this was really cool to see it was just the variety of stuff that can grow down here so yeah i mean if you guys are in miami you have to visit this place I, the just the trees with all the ferns alone was already like too much for my like brain to handle just seeing that every tree just has things growing up it i mean you have like monstera species philodendron species so many ferns so many air plants and they're just everywhere taking over it just was a really insane experience and um i mean you probably have been to your local botanical gardens if you live anywhere in the north and there's a lot of big stuff in there but because this is outdoors the trees are huge everything is like just taking over and really jungle like and it's just it's a whole nother world it's much different than a conservatory that you would find more in the north that needs to be enclosed so it was just an amazing experience um there's lizards everywhere i personally love like little creatures so seeing lizards everywhere was so much fun i didn't film too much of the outer park it was exciting but i only had so much footage and we only had so much time like i said i got there late and whatever so i saved most of the footage for the actual cloud forest so the cloud forest is like their i guess i would call it like their like biggest attraction um they're 
emulating a cloud forest from like Southeast Asia or even like South America. So there's a, it's a much higher humidity. They have a lot of misters everywhere. There's a lot of little rivers and it has a lot more like high humidity loving plants. It's quite different in their little cloud forest thing than it is in the rest of the park. All right, I said I wasn't gonna talk that much, but as I go over this footage, I'm just like losing my mind again because it was so awesome. It makes me honestly want to visit like South America or Southeast Asia um, and really like do a plant tour like in the like jungle or the forest or whatever you want to call it like seeing this was just mind-blowing and I've I've seen pictures of like what South America looks like and it I mean it obviously probably blows this place out of comparison but this is the best I can get until I can actually plan a trip like that they had just such beautiful scenes with these beautiful rivers there would be logs crossing over with all sorts of epiphytes I mean we had orchids uh, ferns, anthuriums, I just everything you can imagine was just growing on these sticks or logs like crossing the river. The rivers were lined with awesome plants. Every tree has something growing up it as well. This is like, I know I've made videos in the past, I think it was on, on tenogy or something, I forget the term, but like what happens when plants grow upwards, a lot of aeroids, how they mature and like really change and morph. You can see examples of that everywhere in this cloud forest and in the rest of the botanical garden. It was actually interesting to see this little peacock moss here. I have some myself, and I didn't know it can really branch out like this. I thought it was more of like, a, not a crawler, but just stayed put on like whatever it was on. But this thing can actually kind of bush up, which was pretty neat. Another thing to notice too, and it might be hard for you to tell because I'm using like exposure compensation, but a lot of these areas were really dark and really shaded. The canopy really uh, blocked out a lot of the sun. And surprisingly, a lot of these anthuriums, a lot of these philodendrons that you see, these crawlers here, they were just growing in like, pretty much shade so i mean i guess it means we really don't need a ton of light in our setups to, uh well i guess it's kind of relative because the sun is powerful but it was surprisingly dark in here and things were doing really well this next scene that they had set up this like waterfall was absolutely stunning and with the mist fog effect it really felt like you were in a whole nother world i mean already for me florida feels like a whole nother world being from wisconsin but this place was so beautiful they had such big awesome anthuriums i mean there's a bunch of different species here some are flowering producing seed i mean there's just everything you can imagine such a variety i wish i knew a little more about like what each species was there definitely aren't like labels and tags everywhere but either way um you would have a blast here even if you don't know what you're looking at at least you can tell like the main like genius genius or whatever like i've already iterated many times there are orchids growing on everything every epiphyte that you can think of is just on everything i don't know if they like plant most of this or if over time it starts to get like that but everything is covered it is awesome it is so cool looking at this tree though a lot of this looks like it's pretty natural especially some of these little fern species so i'm guessing a lot of this stuff spreads quite well since it's a pretty much like identical habitat to what they grow up in Obviously not this orchid right here. This one was definitely attached, but some of the ferns. Every single water feature that they had was absolutely stunning. There was multiples because it's basically like one big circle that you walk through and they have quite a bit of different water features. They're all obviously man-made, but they're phenomenal. And because of the overgrowth, it looks so natural. I like when you zoom out here, you can just see the absolute insane number of plants there is such a variety here it is nuts you could you could walk through this thing for hours and see new stuff every single time i can't wait to come back just because i did not get enough time to really see everything i was pretty rushed actually but again just beautiful like the way everything takes over because the environment really suits these plants is awesome to see Probably a really good strategy would honestly be just to walk through with your eyes forward and looking around at the ground. But then the next time you go through, you got to look up in the trees. There are so many things just like literally like 15, 20 feet above your head that unless you're looking for it, you'll have no idea it's there. So again, you can walk through this thing so many times and see so many different things. As I said too before, there's a ton of lizards and I, I love catching lizards. Ever since I was a child, I'd be catching toads, crayfish, snails, like literally anything you can catch. I'd fill a bucket with it for fun and then just let them all go. It was just fun to see how many it could get. So obviously I had to try and catch a lizard and he was pretty friendly. We hung out for a little bit and then I let him go. But lizards everywhere, different bigger species, small ones, there's just little critters everywhere. One of my favorite orchid species is Bulbophyllum, and they had these things like literally everywhere. It was awesome. I love them. Sadly, a lot of them weren't in flower, which is disappointing because their flowers are usually extremely unique and really weird looking. So sucks I couldn't capture that, but maybe in a future video.
Now, I'm not sure what this plant is, but this is a really good instance of like how these plants change over time as they grow up trees. I talk about this with the giant pothos and many other species. And here you can see quite clearly, it starts out as just a regular plain leaf plant. And soon as it goes up, it's this huge plant with tons of fingers and fenestrations. It's, it radically changes in all of like 10, 15 feet. Also, here's a really cool shot of this orchid. It's got roots just wrapping around this tree and it's super cool to see it in this environment because usually we see these in grocery stores in just like a pot. So you can see how these things really grow. I thought this was pretty wild. This is a ficus villosa. I actually have one of these, but if you look closely, there is no like bottom part. This thing has been cut and broke, but it doesn't matter at this point. The plant's established and it's just gonna keep going up. It doesn't have any roots in the ground. It is literally just getting everything it needs from the side of the tree. Speaking of trees, I was absolutely enthralled by this one. It had so many amazing ferns in it and just all sorts of epiphytes. It was nuts. I love this tree. Like I said, I wish I can go back here and just walk around for hours. As well as the cloud forest, they do have more of an actual greenhouse here for some more like harder to care for stuff that might not do so well if it gets like colder out because Miami did get pretty cold a few days after we left. So they've got some more fragile stuff in actual greenhouses and it's beautiful inside. Right when you walk in, you're greeted with insane humidity. There's mist everywhere. The plants are just taking over. I don't think people own this greenhouse. Honestly, the plants do at this point. They had anthuriums on the walls. There's ferns everywhere. Everything's wet and the colors are deep. It was just fabulous. I really love these greenhouses. And this aesthetic is like exactly what I love. Just absolute chaos and just the plants have just made it their home. There are multiple greenhouses as well. So it's not just one. There's a few different sections. Some have some really awesome water features. And just like I said, it's packed with plants. There are so many ferns and like mosses and everything. And you can tell this has been here for a long time because like the entire railing is just moss and ferns and everything else. They had some absolutely stunning anthuriums. Like this king anthurium is absolutely wild. I mean, look at the size of it. There are so many leaves and everything is just doing fantastic. Pretty much every anthurium in here was like this, just chuck full of leaves and huge. I'm always a sucker for basically logs with tons of stuff growing on it. And this one was no exception. So many beautiful ferns and it just stuck out and was just so beautiful. They built some kind of uh, living wall, I guess. I'm not really sure what it's made of because it's just so dense with plants and pretty much the material has been completely covered by everything growing on it, but it was really pretty. It was soaking wet. It had begonias, anthuriums, mosses, um, just everything you can think of, philodendrons. I bet you there's some monstera in there somewhere, just anything and everything. And it was stunning because it's so like filled in. It really was awesome to see. Oh yeah, in the middle of this one, they also had this like raining unit thing. I don't know what you would really call this, but it just rains in the center on stone and the sound was beautiful. It was like one of my favorite things is the sound of rain, especially on like glass or on concrete or, or I guess the ground. And having that sound in the background while you walk through this was just beautiful. I mean, I, it, I had such a blast. It was so awesome. I guess that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. If you guys ever get a chance to go to Miami, actually, not even if you ever get a chance, I would definitely plan a trip to Miami. I was shocked to actually see the city. I didn't realize how big it was. I Honestly, I thought that like hotel strip, like Miami Beach was the whole city, but it's actually a massive city. It's really cool. There's a lot to do. You can make a really cool vacation out of it, and you got to visit Fairchild Botanical Garden. It is absolutely breathtaking and if you have any interest in plants it is the place to go to and also don't forget that little like membership hack it helps helps your uh, local botanical garden and gets you in free here so don't forget about that but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little tour it was a lot of fun i definitely want to go back and film a longer one where i can actually look at things a little longer but like i said we had an hour and a half to get through a place that probably takes four to five hours so maybe next time but yeah, as always, guys, may your plants grow strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.